Hi, everybody. Welcome to CBSDoc.com. I'm Dr. John LaPook. Today, we're going to be talking about an irresistible book called The Irresistible Henry House, written by my dear friend Lisa Grunwald. The Irresistible Lisa <laughs> Grunwald, welcome. Thanks. And The Irresistible, Irrepressible Bill Fisher, Dr. William Fisher, who is a great psychiatrist who's going to lend insight into this psychologically oriented book. I'm going to read the first sentence. By the time Henry House was four months old, a copy of his picture was being carried in the pocketbooks of seven different women, each of whom called him her son. How can you not go on and read the rest of this book oh, after that? I hope there's no way not to go on and read the rest <laughs> of this book. All right, now, book. what does that mean? Seven different mothers? What can that possibly mean, Lisa Grunwald? Turns out that in the middle of the 20th century, starting in the 1920s and going all the way up through the 1960s, the end of the 1960s, home economics programs around the country had practice houses where young women were taught to sew and cook and clean and do all the things we associate with home economics. But they were also taught how to be mothers. And the way they were taught to be mothers was that they were given a practice baby by local <laughs> orphanage. And the baby stayed in the practice house for sometimes as long as a year or two. And the young women took turns just caring for him or her, one by one, a week at a time, sometimes 10 days at a time, sometimes just, you know, every three days. But they passed him off, passed him around. And in this novel, um, there are seven of them, and they take turns. Henry House comes out of your head, okay? But there were other kids who, in fact, were raised this way. Right? Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. Do we have any idea what happened to them? Basically, no because they were, for the most part, um, brought back into the system from which they'd come. So if they had come from uh, orphanages, which was, for the most part, um, they were returned to their orphanages after a year or so, and then they were adopted. And in the style and manner of the times, that was done in a much more anonymous way in the 50s and 60s than it is done now. Very few records. Um, occasionally, there would be someone, apparently, who knew how he or she had been raised. Bring us forward for the people who haven't read the book. What became of Henry House in terms of his psychology well, and maybe what, psychopathology? What happens to Henry House is apparently what happens to a lot of children who are brought up in a situation where they don't form a single attachment to one strong caregiver or even a, f a few. But the I mean, Bill knows more about this by far than I do, but research suggests that that first year of life is crucial to forming attachments and that if they fail to be formed, it's not as if you can't transcend that, but a whole host of problems can result in a syndrome that's a disorder called attachment disorder. What when are some I, of the, what, Bill, what are some of those, yeah. those problems? Well, these are people who, in the rest of their lives going on, don't really form attachments. Now, the, the, the sort of more sophisticated version of these are people who are very good at initiating relationships, even charming other people. They know what to say to, to draw people in, but there's no actual connection mm -hmm. between them. And that's what happens and, to Henry, right? Henry becomes... Well, I had, Describe when, what happens to Henry, just in terms I, of his powers. He almost has, you know, if he were to use them for good rather than really? evil, right? I mean, he gets these powers in terms of his ability to interact with people absolutely. in a way that, are, that it's absolutely amazing, right? There's a scene early in the book where um, he's shown with a variety of his mothers at the same time, and with one of them, he sings because she loves singing, and with another, he's a, you know, he likes to draw because she thinks he's an artist, and he learns from the earliest age how to adapt himself to what they need and what they want. So as he grows up, he becomes the guy who none of us wanted to date in that, you know, totally charming, how on earth can he know what I need? He anticipates everything I, mm -hmm. I say and, and he smiles at me in that way and it turns out that he's none of those things <laughs> at all. He's just right. an absolute cipher and he's going through the motions. He seems to love you but he doesn't really connect. Right. So how can we decipher and figure out how to use the knowledge that we've gained from this book to date better, <laughs> to have better <laughs> relationships? I think one key thing, one takeaway would be do not date somebody who was raised by seven women. I mean, okay. that would well, be a, a very specific a good, yeah. advice, but can guy, we generalize that a little bit? <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't presume to generalize. Bill, what, what does well, this say to us I, about I relationships? And it takes a village, right? 
Yeah, and it also takes some conflict. A relationship where somebody seems to be 100% in tune with you 100% of the time. I totally agree. <laughs> that's not normal human interaction. Right. Um, and, and that should raise your eyebrows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, a pathology called an as-if personality, and that's somebody who, whoever they're with, they'll be like that person. It's, if it seems too good to be true, you gotta mm -hmm. raise an eyebrow. And, yeah. and he also, I mean, it's not like his effect is universal. He also has a radar for mm -hmm. finding women who will respond to exactly this kind of charm that he has. So well, he's the complete package. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of CBSDoc.com. The Irresistible Henry House by Lisa Grunwald would make a fantastic movie for those of you out there who know how to do it. Thanks so much for joining us. Good day and good health.